I'm Zoe Delahunty Light, and I can tell you that being the lone chemist in Moonbury is quite the responsibility. Potion Permit has you handling the bumps, scratches, and ailments of the residents of Moonbury, but while you're trying to do so, you've also got to win over the townspeople and overcome their suspicion of you, the newcomer. When I put it like that, Potion Permit sounds pretty nifty, right? Kind of like a potion-centric Stardew Valley? But it's not. Unfortunately, despite my intense excitement for Potion Permit, it turned out to be quite the disappointment, and I'm going to tell you why, because my god, it's a missed opportunity. You can see the potential, but it's cruelly out of reach. In the future, there might be, hopefully there will be, updates that improve Potion Permit and make it a better game overall, but until then, take this as a warning. I want to make sure you don't end up wasting your money and buying Potion Permit before it's the game it really should be. So here we go. This is 10 Reasons Potion Permit is a Disappointment. The first thing that Potion Permit really messes up is a crucial one. It's quests. I've run into multiple bugged quests, and these are really important ones, like getting your letter of recommendation and using said letter to upgrade your badge to level 2. Upgrading your badge to level 2 allows you to access new areas surrounding Moonbury, so not being able to do so is quite the impediment, as without it you're stuck in this cursed place where everything is too easy and you're too overpowered to have any kind of fun. If you're stuck on this same bug, I'm so sorry, and I also recommend trying to talk to Zhao to trigger the quest, but I had to restart my game and lose 10 hours of progress to get around it. Not good. When you go into the blacksmith's or the carpenter's shop and try to upgrade your tools or your clinic, it becomes apparent that there's another level of upgrades currently inaccessible to you, but no information about how this upgrade is obtained. I thought it might be linked to your friendship with Raina or Opal Heart, but nope, it's linked to story progress. Really wish this had been clarified with some kind of dialogue line so I didn't waste my time trying to befriend the blacksmith and carpenter in a desperate attempt to upgrade my clinic. Lacking this kind of guidance can't really be justified as a lack of hand-holding either, typically praised in games for good reason, as including a short hint that you simply have to be patient before these upgrades appear would prevent you and me from wasting our time. When you need to diagnose someone or do some part-time work, you're faced with a series of mini-games. My god, they get boring quick. Apart from brewing potions, none of these mini-games increase in difficulty either, so it's just a boring slog to get to the end by the time you've played each game more than a handful of times. I really like the variety in the mini-games, definitely, but I just wish they'd feel like a challenge. And one very specific nitpick I have is that I do not get how there's any kind of fun or tactics in the research minigame. It's just clicking icons until you get the right amount of elements listed at the bottom. Like, what is that? You can't marry the romanceable NPCs. Dead end relationships are something I was once familiar with, but with a church in Moonbury and the ability to upgrade your house so it's big enough for the happy couple, no marriage feels like a missed opportunity. Once you start dating, you can't gain relationship points with the NPC in question either, which is very peculiar. So you're stuck in this limbo of being dating, but nothing actually moving on in your relationship, even if that's something as small as getting married. Okay, this is getting a little bit too relatable for me, so let's get on to the next point. Fishing. Oh my god. A tried and true, dependable part of most farming sims, Potion Permit somehow makes it this inscrutable activity where you're never sure what the end goal is, even when you think it would be obvious, catching fish. Fishing in Potion Permit has progress, with you gaining skill each time you catch a waterborne creature, but this progress is invisible. I mean that quite literally. You have no way to see how far along you are to levelling up your fishing skill, and no way to track it. Those little pluses that pop up after each catch give a vague indication that you're getting better, but without a skill meter to refer to, 
there's no telling when you'll miraculously level up and be able to access the more advanced fishing spots in Moonbury. No matter the size of your catch, you only get one white or pink meat per fish or crustacean, which is also a pain. Exacerbated with the frequency, you'll be asked to gather white meat by the notice board each week. Ugh. I'm now thoroughly in a grumpy mood, as putting all these issues in one script has made me realise what a disappointment Potion Permit is, but hey, let's keep this miserable train going. Potion Permit is so, so grindy. Stone and wood is needed for everything from upgrades to quests, meaning you're going to be doing a lot of grinding and mindless chopping and mining to get the necessary amount of resources. You do gradually reap more stone and wood when you get into the different biomes, but it's weird that there's no transition to needing gold or rarer materials for more advanced upgrades instead of stone and wood. You play a chemist in Potion Permit, so why not trade potions and grow rare ingredients in exchange for upgrades? Again, another missed opportunity. I promise this is the only time I'm going to compare Potion Permit to Stardew Valley and, specifically, Pelican Town. Unlike Pelican Town, Moonbury severely lacks shortcuts through its settlements. You have to stick to the cobbled streets as you can't cut through gardens or alleyways between buildings, unlike in Stardew Valley where there are shortcuts in Pelican Town that you can take so you're not wandering pointlessly through the streets when there could be a quicker route to where you need to get to. This might not seem too annoying initially, but with all the tracking you're going to be doing in Moonbury, it's going to get on your nerves real quick. In Potion Permit, you seek potion permits because you are a chemist. You make potions. You understand the medicinal value of different plants and how to combine them to create salves, ointments, solutions and oils. So why, oh why, do I not have my own alchemy garden where I can grow plants for said potions? Going out and foraging for them first to obtain seeds of whichever plant you need makes sense to me, but as a chemist who knows plants inside out, not having a plot of land for my own herbs and specimens to save me going outside Moonbury is nonsensical. Add to this the fact that plants grow in the same place each time you explore, meaning there's no discovery or anything resembling actual foraging where you need to figure out the different patches of ingredients when one runs out, and it just makes it even worse. It just adds to the grindy feeling of Potion Permit that you have to go to the same place each time to get the same plants. I just want a little bit of variety. Is that so much to ask? Returning to the whole, I'm a chemist, my purpose is to brew potions and cure illnesses thing, you do not have nearly enough regular patients in your clinic. Townsfolk appear once every handful of days with the same illnesses over and over again, which you have to diagnose over and over again. Even though you'd think as a chemist you'd be able to diagnose certain ailments by sight after seeing them enough times. Also, there's no satisfying in-game law reason why people are getting sick regularly enough to be, effectively, hospitalised. Considering Potion Permit's emphasis on how previous chemists have damaged the local environment, why not make Moonbury's residents mysteriously susceptible to illness due to this damaged environment? hence justifying how often Moonbury's inhabitants appear in your clinic. While foraging for ingredients, you're going to run into wildlife who would rather you didn't intrude upon their territory, but they don't have much of a defence. Combat is so easy that it quickly strays into being tiresome, as you can merely wait for enemies to stop attacking as they all have long breaks in their attack patterns. It's not really hard to dodge attacks as there's a lot of warning before they happen and they don't switch up their attack pattern, so yeah, combat is way too easy. Much like foraging for plants that are found in exactly the same places each and every day, combat presents you with creatures spawning in the same place over and over, and running away from them is enough to make them leave you be. They're more of an inconvenience than a challenge. I was surprised to not find the more dangerous creatures protecting the rarer plants you can find out in the wild, as once I'd brought these powerful plants back to life, there was absolutely no impediment to getting them. Okay, I'm done now, I promise. That's 10 reasons why, unfortunately, Potion Permit is a disappointment. Have you played Potion Permit, and if so, what do you think of it? 
please let me know in the comments below. I need to know I'm not alone in this. If you haven't given it a go yet, I'd definitely wait for some updates or additional free content before you buy it. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and I'm glad you liked my exceedingly grumpy voice for the whole thing. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer, as we have a new video out almost every single day. Now, I'm going to go and play, yup, you guessed it, Stardew Valley, because I now need to scratch that farming life sim itch before it becomes an ailment I need to visit an actual chemist for. So, I'll see you lot next time.